Hello everybody and welcome to day 9 of my beginner sewing course. I hope you are well and today we're going to be learning a little bit more about your serger and how to thread it and what settings it should stay at because that can get real complicated and real quick. So let's get into it. So this is what my serger looks like. Uh, here I have all the four threads and the threads go in here and as you can see here we have the um, thread tension and it's all set at the same number. Here we have the presser foot. On the side we have our hand wheel, the differential feed, and then the stitch length. This is how you open it. And as you can see there's like drawings of how you need to thread it so it makes it pretty simple i will admit mine is a little dirty um could use a good cleaning you also have an accessories tray in here and there's uh, a couple of needles and this little tool right there it's going to be useful later so before i show you how to thread the machine i'm just going to show you a couple of settings on your uh serger that maybe will make your uh, sewing look better because if they're not adjusted then like you might have some really big problems with your serger and you might think that like it's broken but it's not it's just the settings that are wrong so let's start here at the thread tension they should always be at the same number as you can see I keep mine at three right here we have the differential feed and depending on where it is it could either stretch or gather the fabric so you're going to want to figure out what works for your fabric. Um, usually though, if you're working with knit fabrics, um, it might stretch your fabric or like create puckering. So if that happens, like I would put it higher, but for normal fabrics, it should be lower. The black wheel right there is the stitch width wheel and you can adjust it um, depending on which width of a stitch you would like. The problem might also just be uh, your stitch length, so also just play with that and try to figure out what works for your fabric. As you can see here, there's a white lever, and on the left there is the letter R, and on the right there is the letter S. So that is the stitch finger lever, and it should always be set to S for all standard overlock sewing. But to sew rolled, a rolled edge, um, that's when you put it at R. Um, right in this little hole is where you go to change the presser foot pressure and you're just going to use that tool that I showed you from before. Uh, stick it in here <laughs> and for less pressure um, you're going to be turning the adjustment tool in counterclockwise direction and for more pressure you're going to be turning it in clockwise direction. So if you fixed all of these settings and your machine still um, is causing you problems that means that there's something different that's wrong with it. And that's when I would take it to a professional. All right, so um, now I unthreaded the machine. So I'm gonna show you how to thread it back. Um, this is not gonna be easy. If you thought that threading your sewing machine was hard, you're in for a treat because, oof, it is difficult. But let's just get into it, you know? Let's start by placing those right here. So one, two three and then four beautiful okay so the first thing that you're gonna do is place the thread in here so it needs to loop in here and just leave it and do the same with this one Burr. Can you like not be a bitch? Okay. Like this. And now this one as well. Like that. Okay. Just gonna put this up. Put it out of the way. Perfect. Now, as you can see in the drawing, they're asking you to start with the purple thread. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is the one. So what we're going to do is place it underneath that metal thingy. Oh, 
okay like that and then you're gonna want to put the thread in here but like make, put it in the middle and it has to go like really deeply in so right here I have a, a quick start guide uh, and it's way more precise like you can see exactly where you need to go um, so as you can see the first thing uh, is to place it in that little loop and then second is under that metal little palette third is where the uh, thread tension is and now let's go to four so right here is four and now it's pretty easy all you have to do is follow um the purple dots but if you look here it says it right here so five six so just loop it here and then loop it right here Okay, now that's done. Now it's number seven, and that's where it is. So you just loop it around like that again. And now we need to go to number eight. So here, here there's a little close-up of what number eight is. So you got to put it in that hole. So in order to see better, I'm just going to turn the hand wheel and I'm gonna turn it towards me and that's moving some of the parts and it's allowing me to see where the hole is. So that's where it is. This is when I take my tweezers. Let me get a good grip. And you just feed it through the hole. All right, and that's all. I'm gonna try to push it. Now the purple thread is threaded. So we're gonna move on to yellow because here it says it is number two. So for yellow, I'm just gonna grab it and once again, put it under the metal palette and just make sure it really is in there. Okay, and then once again, you push it in that wheel, like that. Now we can go back to our guide and look at two, yellow. Uh, we've done one, we've done two, we've done three. Now we have to do four. Four is the same as um, four on the purple, so let's just do that. Place it underneath, simple. And now you can see that there's a yellow dot right here. So that gives you an indication of where you need to go. Well, you can still look at your paper. Um, and yes, exactly. It says it right here, five. And then there's even six, and then seven, and then eight. So let's just do that. Oops. So it's right here. And then same thing right here. And then right here. Perfect. I also suggest not having nails when you do this because it just makes it way harder. So now we've done eight. So we need to move on to nine and then 10. Um, this is when it gets really hard. The yellow line is the hardest by far. So once again, I'm going to move the hand wheel towards me. And as you can see, it opens this up. So there's that yellow dot. So I'm just going to place my thread here. I made a mistake before. Like there was still one more before we do um, number nine and ten. So this is number eight. So this is where we're at. We have to place it in here now and that one is difficult. So let me just try again. Oh, okay, I did it. Wasn't too hard actually. <laughs> okay, so now we have to move on to nine and 10 and this is when it gets really difficult. 
So this is 9 and 10, and that's when it's hard. So they know that, and they give us a close-up. So you just have to hook the thread in that little um, nook right here. So they're telling you to do 8, 9, 10 as a way to like make it easier. So you just basically slide the thread like over that metal thing and then slide it across all the way to that little hole and then pull on it. And then you just have to thread that little hole right here. So let's do it. So this one right here is the one that we're supposed to be threading. But as you can see, it is very dark in there. So bear with me while I do this. Okay, so by turning the hand wheel even more uh, towards me, I was able to make it come out a little more. And with my tweezers, I was able to put the thread in that little nook right here. So now all I have to do is place it through that little hole there. So let's do that. All right, the thread is in. It is out of sight, out of mind. Now we can move on to these two, the green and the blue. So let's start with the green. Uh, the first three steps are the same ones again. So let's start with that. All right, this is the green one. Let's place it in here. Doesn't get easier, does it? Okay. And now we do this. And now if you remember from the drawing, you have to put it in here. Now we have to take the thread and place it underneath here as well. And on top here, because that's where the green is. Now the next step is to place it in that little spooly thing tornado whatever it's called let's just do it like that bruh I'm getting stuck everywhere there we go okay and now the last step is just to thread the needle so i'm gonna use my tweezers again all right i threaded it off camera now i know what people mean when they say that it just means that um i was crying and i didn't want you to see <laughs> i'm kidding i wasn't crying but like that was hard, man. Like, threading a serger is not easy. But the finish is so good. So it's worth it. All right, so let's thread the last one. We can do it. You know the drill. Metal thing. You came in. Here. And then right here. And then you follow the blue dot. So you place it here. And now you go in the tornado. Oof, that one's so smooth. Woo! All right, but now you have to thread it. So good luck to me. All right. I can do it, right? First try, come on. Oh, I think. <gasps> no way. No way. Bruh. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I went in first try. I so needed this. Okay. All right, <laughs> I'm happy again. And try to make your um, needle thread go under here, so under the presser foot. And it is done. Your serger is now threaded, hopefully. Uh, if not, get on that. And um, yeah, be careful. It's it's gonna be difficult and it's mentally exhausting. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. So don't give up. Well, I hope you had fun learning about your serger a little more. That was definitely difficult, but it always is. Uh, especially filming it too, like, it was just a lot. Um, but it's done, yay. Uh, and yeah, I guess your homework would just be to um, make sure that the settings on your serger are okay. Um, so just play with it and uh, use like whatever fabric that you have at home, whatever scrap fabric. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I will see you in day 10. <laughs>